Welcome, everybody. I've got Juliana Garces on the show. Uh, welcome, Juliana. So in past yeah. interviews, um, I've heard you tell your story, but for folks that haven't seen those interviews, uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us how you became an artist? Absolutely. Um, so I'm a visionary artist uh, on a mission to raise the collective consciousness through art um, and yeah, uh, spread inspiration and uh, inspire people to be the best version of themselves and to connect with spirit. Um, I started making art from a really young age, um, largely due to growing up with uh, language barriers, moving between different countries. Um, I became very fascinated with how art transcends language, how you can be anywhere in the world and you can show someone an artwork and they'll understand, you know, like the emotion, it, it goes beyond the language barrier. So as I got older, language wasn't an issue anymore, but um, I really like liked still how that it was possible to transcend language with art. And I started developing a spiritual practice um, through really through lucid dreaming. I started lucid dreaming at 12 years old by accident. Um, it just kind of started happening and progressed to astral projection. And uh, I started, you know, getting really curious about spiritual practices, uh, started meditating and then shortly after working with medicines and yoga and all these various, you know, forms of uh, getting visions. And again, um, I found myself just how I had as a child where words felt short, like words weren't enough. Um, so I turned to art just how I had as a child to express things that uh, I feel like language aren't sufficient. Uh, to express. So that's how I got into art. Well, that's wonderful. How much of your art is influenced by lucid dreaming? And I think in one of the interviews, you mentioned astral projection versus psychedelics. Oh, it varies. There's, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of pieces I've created from, you know, lucid dreaming, astral projection, um, hypnosis, and there's a lot from medicines. Uh, and some are kind of like a mix of the two where, you know, maybe I'll have a certain experience uh, while, you know, astral projecting, but I'll have the style that's inspired a lot by things I see while I work with medicines. Uh, yeah, and sometimes I just uh, also get visions through chanting or meditating or sometimes it just happens. I'm just like, you know, driving my car and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, like seeing this mystical vision. Uh, in my mind's eye uh, and yeah so I feel like the more I open those doors uh, which have been largely open through um, doing dream work and through uh, medicines the more um, it's accessible. How do you think the different worlds that you see in your visions are related? I feel like they're almost layers um, like I feel like all these uh, realms are existing at the same time uh, and simultaneously, you know, uh, I think it's just like what we tune into, like uh, channels on a television, you know, they're all like playing and they're all kind of happening at the same time, but we, it depends which one we like, you know, decide to tune into. Um, yeah, and, you know, I feel like there is levels to them um, from what I've sensed. Uh, you know, there's realms above this and below this, but they're all here at, you know, happening at the same time. But we sometimes um, not consciously, you know, we, we don't perceive them. But if we do choose to try to seek them out with various practices, we can tune into more than just this realm is like, what I found. Like, would you ever go to a realm, let's say on a psychedelic journey and then visit that same realm during a lucid dream? and then that same realm during an astral projection or are, are they different? So most, so the lucid dreaming, I would say not so much, but through astral projection, I can access a lot of the realms I access with medicines. Um, I would describe that like for people that, you know, haven't worked with lucid dreaming and astral projection, um, it can be kind of tricky to know what the difference is. Um, I would say that when we dream, we um, are kind of in this unconscious cloud of symbols and thoughts, and we're not aware it's happening. We're just like kind of caught up in it. That's like an ordinary dream. 
uh, but we're in the astral realm. So I feel like we're, our body is in the astral realm, but we're caught up in this cloud of our own like thoughts and symbols and processes of, you know, um, trying to kind of break things up of emotions we've gone through. But, but uh, when we lose a dream, we're still in that cloud caught up in that cloud but now we're aware of it and we can control and we can change it but it's still kind of more of like our mind our like mental phenomena uh but astral projection is when we leave our body so it always starts so every single astral projection always starts with one leaving the body that's like the like telltale sign that it's an astral projection versus a lucid dream uh and you leave your body and you always start where you're physically at so if you're you know in your room that's where it starts and i feel like you're actually like more conscious of this other realm um uh, instead of caught up in you know your own thoughts and symbols um and through that realm i feel like much more can be accessed because it's you can kind of travel to higher realms and you know explore more versus the exploration that can be found through lucid dreaming is more of like exploration of one's own like symbols and thoughts. Interesting. Now, do you see the same beings across these worlds from when you, let's say, astral project and you take plant medicines? Uh, yeah, depending on what realm, you know, um, I often go to the what I would refer to as the spirit realm, which is um, most people will be familiar with it if they've ever tried uh, like high doses of mushrooms or of uh, DMT, spirit molecule ayahuasca, where uh, it, this realm is usually, you know, obvious that it's that realm, what I would describe as it has a lot of fractals. It's usually has like a black background, it has these like glowing fractals and symbols, and it's very infinitely intricate uh, and decorative. Um, and usually like you can, you know, run into beings there and some people call them the machine elves or, uh, as Terrence <laughs> used to call them and, uh, or, you know, they call them like the gestures or, you know, there's various, um, uh, but those would be the beings that, you know, through astral projection or through, you know, working with DMT or mushroom or hypnosis, I can visit those same beings, um, in that realm, but there is obviously more realms, but those I feel like are the ones that throughout various practices can be like accessed, you know. Are you able to control which realm you visit and which beings you see on your journeys? Sometimes, sometimes. So um, it depends like in a way, uh, there are certain medicines that I feel like take me personally to a specific realm very frequently. Like, you know, the DMT and mushrooms usually take me to the spirit realm uh something like 5-meo dmt would take me more to the realm of pure consciousness which i would consider to be a realm above the spirit realm where uh that realm is uh what i've usually experienced as oneness and complete dissolve of self um so in the spirit realm there's still kind of like a sensation of separation like there's the perceiver and the perceived where we're seeing all these various fractals and these beings but there's still you know, it's that and us. Um, versus in the realm of pure consciousness, there is no, no separation. It's just like pure oneness, pure consciousness, uh, what people, you know, what I would call, you know, source, God. Um, and it's not very visual is the thing, but it's, it's, it's actually, it feels much more powerful, which is ironic than this other intricate fractal realm. Um, so yeah, it, so, so it sounds like depending on which plant medicine you take, it takes you to, to a different realm. Yeah. Have you used your intention or your will to control where you go? Is that part uh, of it? Yeah, so mostly, so with the medicines, it usually like kind of takes me to a specific realm, but with astral projection that I can more like seek it out. So I would say the astral realm is below the spirit realm. It's a little bit more real, like, like this physical realm um so i would say it's like the physical realm then the astral realm the spirit realm and the realm of your consciousness kind of like how the layers is, i've perceived them so far in my experiences um and in my journey but through going into the astral realm i can like choose to access those other realms 
uh, more easily. Because in that realm, I feel like it's almost like me deciding. I'm more conscious um, versus the medicines kind of just like uh, catapult me to a specific realm, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not too familiar with astral projection. How do you do it? What's your process for doing that? Oh, so, I mean, there's a lot of techniques that can help. Um, for me, it kind of, you know, started happening on its own since I was like 12. Um, I just started leaving my body without knowing about any of these things. Uh, and I remember telling my parents like, hey, like I'm leaving my body. I'm like aware I'm dreaming. I'm waking myself out of dreams consciously. And they're like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, so I started like looking up, knowing you're dreaming, leaving your body in your sleep. And I found, you know, just a dream master projection and started reading more about those. But the things I recommend for people um, that want to do it, because everybody can do it. Um, and it's been done throughout history in many ancient cultures. I know the Egyptians have a lot of depictions of them leaving their body um, and, you know, a lot of Buddhist um you know tradition it's very well known uh, a lot of amazon traditions also uh but yeah it it it's helpful to write down your dreams to begin with always like as soon as you wake up write down your dreams because what that's doing is it's getting you more conscious of your dream state because if we're never writing down our dreams or paying any attention to them they're not very uh we can't recall them really well and it can get to the point where we might actually astral project, but we wake up and don't remember it. So it's really important as a foundation to have our dream recollection and dream consciousness more uh, sharp. And that is done through writing down dreams every day. And after that setting, uh, like affirmations can help really well. Like before one's about to try to uh, astral project or lucid dream to say, I will astral project, I will astral project, I will and say that out loud a few times and say it in your mind and fall asleep to that can really help. Um, there's also, you know, the famous reality checks uh, where we can, you know, turn on and off a switch. I like to just like tap my palm and if my finger goes like through my palm, I know I'm in a dream uh, or you can pinch yourself, things like that to like check, you know. So the, the thing with those is you want to do them while you're actually like awake. Even though you know you're not dreaming, you want to get into the habit of doing them, of questioning whether you're dreaming. Because if you are doing it, you know, let's say three, four times a day in waking state, even though you're like, I know I'm not dreaming, but am I? You pinch yourself, no. Nah. You get into the habit. And then if you build up that habit, you'll do it in your dreams. And yeah. once you do it in your dreams, you'll realize you're actually that time you are dreaming. And uh, that can, you know, make you lucid. Um, so that's also really helpful. But at the end of the day, if you really want the most straight shot to, you know, being able to lucid dream or astral project, what I found like over the years, hypnosis helped so much. Hypnosis can like, you know, take you directly there, um, especially if you do it in the mornings. Uh, we want to, you know, in general, for even if you're trying to do it just on your own or with hypnosis, you always want to do it early in the morning um, because we don't want to do it at night. At night, our body needs rest and it's tired. And we want to, like our body wants to go into deeper sleep, you know, into deep sleep, which is not, um, you know, suitable for working with these, you know, techniques. So the, there's this method called waking back to sleep is what it's called. And it's basically we uh, wake up earlier than we usually do and we stay up for a few minutes, like 15 minutes, not doing anything intense. So not looking at any bright screen or doing any intense physical exercise. We just kind of want to like relax, maybe meditate for mind nice and clear, uh, and then go back to sleep. Since our body has already gotten the rest it needed during the night of deep sleep, um, when, but still it's early, our body will fall back into sleep really quickly but won't need the rest. So that's when most dreams will happen where very intense dreams can happen. And that's the, the prime time for working with, um, you know, either hypnosis to lucid dream or, you know, trying to do it, you know, with affirmations. But there's really good YouTube videos on lucid dreaming hypnosis. Uh, my favorite is the ones by Michael Sealing. Um, he's great and his videos have like millions of views and um, especially I found if I mix them with a microdose of like mushrooms, like 0.3 or something, 
uh, it really stimulates the visual um, aspect of the brain. So when I go in, it's like very HD. I can like slip right into the astral realm and have everything be super HD where I can feel things, taste things. Um, like, yeah, it's, it's very vivid. Uh, so that's my preferred method at the moment because it's very a, direct. That's a good tip. So mm -hmm. do you have to go through the lucid dreaming state before you astral project? Like, are, is, is that the order of it or are you able Not to just astral project? Okay. So you can just ask to project um, if that's like, you know, what you focus on and, you know, um, the point is to like, once you're oh, like, kind of like feeling that your body is asleep, you want to practice like leaving your body. Um, the rope method is really good where you just pretend there's a rope in front of you and you do this motion and that'll pull your body out. But you can ask to project if you're lucid dreaming, because if you're lucid dreaming, you're already conscious that you're in a dream. You want to go back to feeling where your body actually is. So you stop and you stop paying attention to all everything, all the, you know, the dream that's going on. You just stop paying attention to that. You feel, you go like, okay, where's my body? Let me go to my bed where I'm laying down and feel my body. And once you feel your body, you want to feel yourself like lifting up and, or you can do the rope method and that will bring you into the astral realm. So it's really easy to go from lucid dreaming into astral projection but i would say it's not really easy to go from astral projection into lucid dreaming once you're kind of in the astral realm it's much more interesting than a lucid dream so got it and so how do you go from these experiences of lucid dreaming plant medicine experiences astral projection uh, what, what's your creative process like to create that art piece? That's a, um, a great question. So um, I feel like with getting visions, visionary art, what I found time is of, is of essence. So it's kind of like, you know, like, you know, dreams when we wake up, the more time passes, the more they kind of fade away and we can't remember it a few days later. It's very much like that. Even with a, a medicine, I find that like, right as I get out of it, I remember it, but sh even minutes, even seconds after it starts to fade and fade and fade. So I always, when I'm gonna work with one of these techniques that I want to use to create an artwork, I'm seeking out a vision. I'll have uh, my sketchbook right next to me with pen. And as soon as I come out, either of like waking up from a astral projection or coming out of a DMT experience, I will immediately, like before doing anything else, I'll immediately grab that paper and pen and draw and write and you know capture as much as i can like get as much out on that paper um you know doing sketches and describing it uh and from there then that vision's captured then i can kind of relax and a few days can pass and i can like refer back to it because it's now like you know captured and from there i'll you know start you know um sketching it and do more like refine you know designs and working with colors, looking up reference photos, doing research on, you know, form and things that might relate to that specific piece. Um, and from there, I'll, you know, either I'll, I'll sometimes start with, you know, working with watercolor and then acrylics, or I'll start digitally depending on, you know, what the vision is. And then, you know, I'll work back and forth between acrylic and digital uh, to create, you know, my mixed media art, which is you know, both digital and acrylic mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So at this point, I'm going to bring up some of your artwork awesome. and I'd love to hear the story behind some of these pieces. So Absolutely. let me do that. I saw this piece of work and I love it because of all the colors and there's so much going on. What, what's the story behind this? So uh, this one is called One into Infinity. And this piece is actually a collaboration with one of my, you know, best friends and one of my favorite artists also. Um, super, you know, grateful to to know him and have him as a friend, uh, Luke Schroeder. Um, yeah, highly recommend looking him up. Uh, so we had discussed, you know, um, doing a collaboration and we had talked about various ideas. Uh, the one we we kind of decided to go with uh, that we both really resonated with was uh, trying to express uh, how everything's interconnected and uh, really one. So, because um, we'd had both had a lot of, you know, mystical and visionary experiences uh, with 
you know, that meaning. So I started by, you know, doing sketches and then um, of concepts. We really liked the kind of like the globe made out of, you know, uh, yin yang dualities uh, with all these kind of like different life forms. So we have, like, you know, trees and animals, fungi and bacteria and all these life forms around this like um, globe of duality. And um, from there, I created a, a digital piece and um so usually you know i'll do both digital and acrylic but with this piece i decided to just stick with doing the digital aspect and then um from there luke painted his famous little swirls that he's very well known for and super talented at doing and he just like took this piece and just swirled all over it um painted all uh, these beautiful bases on it and um just really jazzed it up with uh, acrylic and uh, we were super excited when we released this piece how good of a response it got and the original sold right away so we were both really stoked we're actually working on creating another collaboration so this piece was fairly um like normal size so like 16 by 20 but now we're starting to work on a piece of hanuman that's going to be much much larger uh quite a few feet um, we still haven't, you know, we're just kind of still in concept stage, but uh, we're thinking of making about maybe like four to six feet somewhere uh, around there. That's great. And, is yeah. this, so is this based off of one vision that you had or several visions it that was you since, guys all had? So it was, since it was a collaboration, it was more of like we discussed, you know, some of the themes that we both experienced through a lot of our mystical experiences. And we wanted to focus on that oneness and the interconnectedness of, of everything. Uh, so I came up with this kind of composition symbol of, you know, the globe with the, um, the beings around it, all the, you know, life forms. And from there, you know, Luke did his magic with the swirls. So Yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks. Okay. Uh, this one really struck me. What's the story behind this one? So that is uh, my artwork a depiction of Krishna, uh, Krishna's cosmic form specifically, which, you know, technically his co cosmic form is Vishnu. Um, so in, a couple years ago in 2020, um, I was diving really deep into um, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, there was one moment, you know, I that I was listening to it, um, an audio, and I was like creating art. I was working on something else when um, chapter 11, where um, they, they speak about Krishna revealing his true form. So, you know, Krishna is more in like a kind of like almost kind of human-like form with um, his, you know, friend Arjuna. And Arjuna asked him, can you please like show me your true form, your God form? And he decides to reveal his his true form of Vishnu, of you know, uh, this like cosmic form to Arjuna. And just the way it was described, I literally like I was doing something else and just listening to it. And I, I literally like, had to sit down. I was standing up. I, I sat down from how powerful the vibrations were from that chapter and how deeply it was impacting me. And I like closed my eyes and it just like got extreme waves of bliss. And I started, you know, seeing aspects of this artwork. And I knew I had to create an artwork uh, of what that chapter described. And if anybody ever has the, the chance to read the Bhagavad Gita, or listen to it or read chapter 11, it's very poetic the way it describes like uh, how it reveals, like how it has infinite faces and infinite arms and uh, is, you know, just like so beautifully beyond anything physical that, um, yeah, I want to do my best to, to create an artwork to come close to depicting something like that. So I started, you know, seeking, you know, I had gotten vague visions of, you know, the concept. I started creating it. A lot more of the visions started to come through uh, while I was, you know, uh, sleeping, like somewhere between sleep and dream state. When I'm falling asleep, I uh, do my best to try to stay conscious. And as I'm slipping into the dream state, um, 
I, you know, began to get more vivid visions and I saw Krishna uh, in front of me with, you know, these white gowns and gold and he looked so grand and I knew that that, like, while I was creating diary, that that's how he had to be, like, uh, dressed and, you know, depicted. Um, so, yeah, so it was a mix of the vision kind of came through in multiple layers. That's beautiful. I mean, I, I did read that book and that's my favorite part of the book. Also. Uh, yeah, okay. that's great. Cool. Okay. So what about this art piece? Is this a self portrait or what's the story um, behind this? Kinda, you know, truly in a way. Uh, so I feel like a lot of my artworks end up, even when I'm not doing it consciously, being a little bit of a self portrait. Uh, so this one's called uh, Envision. Uh, and this was largely actually inspired by Envision Festival in Costa Rica, which I went to in 2020. And um, during that festival, um, it was super duper magical. And I got to have so many incredible experiences in the jungle with all these you know, beautiful people um, and work, worked with the various medicines. Uh, it was just incredible, like magical festival. And throughout the experience, I actually made a really lovely friend who went around dressed as an elf the whole time with elf ears. And that was like their thing. They always like wore elf ears. And by the end of the festival, um, I had like, you know, had so many medicinal experiences with them. I felt like they were like, almost like making me an elf. And by then they were like putting their elf ears on me and stuff. and. I wanted to create a piece about, you know, um, like almost my elf form uh, that, you know, might be like in the spirit realms and stuff. So here um, she's holding, you know, a, a pipe that's vaporizing DMT. Um, and it has like little, if you ever look at it like closely, it has all these like little elves on the pipe. And from there, this vapor is turning into all these various things that related to that festival experience. So. Um, you can see in the smoke, there's, you know, a lot of yoga, cause there's a lot of yoga workshops. There's a lot of like um, creatures from the jungle. There's uh, a lot of medicines. So anybody that's ever, you know, experienced even different festivals or this festival, I'm sure can relate uh, to how it all becomes so magical and just kind of, yeah. Very cool. It kind of evaporates. <laughs> like, yeah. <it's> like <laughs> Very cool. Uh and what about this piece? Another very mystical feeling, amazing piece. Thanks, thanks. So this um, this piece, it really started with, I have another piece called um, The Infinite Self Plays the Game, um, which is very similar, but it has a board game. And um, this was all inspired by um, my first experience with Changa, Changa being infused leaf DMT. Um, and I worked with Changa, and in that experience, um, I started to see from the perspective of various, really all creatures and all beings. So imagine like you're jumping from their viewpoint of like, you know, it's jumped from like humans and animals and, you know, um, then, you know, other beings like, but at like light speed. So it's like, it was like flashing, like all these different viewpoints. And from that, that flashing rapid, like shift of perspectives of all beings, um, you know, when a fan moves really fast and you start to see like, you know, how it's like really like, I don't know, it looks like a, a whole like circle, you know, yep. when it's been really fast. Yep. It was kind of like that when it was shifting so fast from all these different perspectives, I started to see kind of this one being kind of acting out all these acts, all these perspectives. And it was what I would, what I call the infinite self, uh, or, you know, it maybe it can be, you know, referred to as Atman or a symbol for, for God, um, kind of acting out all these roles through it sh shifting so rapidly through all these different perspectives. And I saw that it was playing like this game of existence, uh, this wheel of samsara, creating all these, you know, various viewpoints. So when I came out of that experience, I, I started by creating a depiction of, of it. 
um, with a board game of like it playing the game of existence, but it didn't feel like it was sufficient a couple years passed and I knew that I wanted to create a version of it that was more detailed uh, and depicting it with a wheel, the wheel of Sansara, it kind of like orchestrating this whole game of existence. So I created this piece kind of as a, a second version of it um, that was more, you know, different way of expressing that same experience. Is this hand painted or how did you do this piece? This one's a uh, mixed media also. So it started, uh, so technically um, it started off as, you know, partly digital, partly acrylic. Then uh, I decided I wanted to make it larger and I started painting it, painting it all with just acrylic. So I'm still painting, <laughs> finished painting it. So oh, wow. technically <laughs> the, the, the mixed media version, which is this like, uh, digital acrylic version that you're seeing here but the same version is being recreated larger uh all with acrylic so that i can you know i want to add a wheel to it so the wheel at the bottom that circle is gonna be like um you know piece itself is like eight feet and uh would have wow. a wheel that's a wooden round that rotates with the motor so it's like a long-term project i've spent quite a few years kind of just figuring it all out um and I have a few depictions of what the frame will look like to hold it all together. But my finished vision with this piece, which I'm still kind of like chipping away, is to have it be this like very large piece that's in motion with this wheel of samsara kind of rolling. Um, very cool. Is, is this Ganesh? Yes. Yes. So um, this piece was inspired actually um, by chanting. So I got um, there was a time that I felt really called to various chants. Uh, there was one specifically by uh, Sam Garrett, um, which was kind of like a, um, he, he kind of did a, like a mix of some lyrics with a lot of chanting. And I really resonated with that chant. Um, and I was doing it pretty often. Um, I think his song's Oga Necha. And, um, through that chanting, this piece came like specifically through chanting. I started That's getting great. visions of this artwork and uh, I created it uh, from the visions I got from doing chants. And I'm super grateful. I actually had a friend who met up with Sam Garrett and gave him a print of this piece and he really loved it, which was really cool. It felt like the whole like creative process went full circle of yeah. you know, him inspiring me and then I sharing the artwork with them. And, yeah, it's, really it's neat. beautiful. Let me see how many more we've got in a little bit. I really want to get to everything. So I apologize on the time constraint, but yeah. Oh, good. So this one's called The Actor Behind the Mask, which again is kind of like that same experience of, you know, seeing God, you know, orchestrating this whole game of existence. And this is that same kind of concept. It's another depiction of the infinite self. Uh, but if you see, if he has all these masks in front of him, uh, some are, you know, human, some are animals. And he, it's like, he's like almost like the actor acting all these out, you know, like these are just like roles that are played. So that's kind of a depiction of that concept. Did you see that in um, an actual plant medicine vision or where did you so, experience this? So this, you know, piece, the, really the concept came originally from that Changa experience. Oh, okay. Um, and, um, but this one specifically, I was like meditating on that experience and I, uh, I was sober and I started, you know, through meditation, just getting visions of it depicted in this way, you know, that same concept, but depicted in a different way to express that idea. Very cool. And what about this poster? This is uh, super interesting. <laughs> so this poster is actually my most popular artwork and uh, ironically, um, and it came through, um, me just you know i I've, I've gotten so much you know healing and inspiration through medicines uh and i really do firmly believe that they should be legalized so that you know not only can they be safer uh because you know we'll know what's actually in the substances and more education can be spread about them and you know how to do them responsibly um but i was you know actually hanging out with some friends and i was dancing um, I think I was just working with cannabis and just like dancing and I started getting visions of this piece of uh, creating a poster that was, you know, kind of a bit political to try to help the movement because 
as an artist, I want to help, uh, you know, inspire people with, you know, the, the things that really inspire me. So I created this uh, poster. Um, it didn't, you know, I didn't think it was going to be anything crazy, but it blew up and uh, it was spotted all over the world. I, I, I saw people send me photos of it in New Zealand, all the way New Zealand and all over the cool. place. Yeah, really, really loved uh, the response. I guess a lot of people resonated with that message. Great. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any parting advice for folks who want to make their own psychedelic art? Um, well, do them responsibly, of course, and um, just keep creating because each time you create a vision, each time you get a little better at it. So. Great. And where can people find you? Um, you can find me on julianagarcesart.com or you know, follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Juliana Garces Art. Also have Twitter. You can, if you look at my name with art at the end, uh, you'll find all, all my stuff. Well, thank you so much, Juliana. I appreciate your time. Thank you. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like or hitting that subscribe button. Or consider sticking around on the channel to listen to some music and enjoy some original art. In future videos, I hope to interview more visionary artists. Links to any reference material for this video should be found in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryzen. I'll see you later.